poems had already been featured and recognized both in national and international anthologies. Does being a Cebuana poet matter a great deal to you? It matters a lot just as um, my, my background, my having grown up here in Cebu and in the, partly in Dumaguete City and all the experiences that I had, um, the kind of father I had that also uh, is part of who I am now. And, that, and I would say that all of these things okay, are in my consciousness and so when I write a poem, okay, it's all there. I may be writing about other things, but um, this is who I am. Okay, I am a Cebuano who happens to be writing in English, who happens to be a woman, okay, and who had all of this uh, Cebuano consciousness in me. You know, so I would say that matters a lot. Yes. When did you start writing poems? As far as I can remember, I've been writing since I was 12, 13, 14. I'd say that as early as that because uh, my first poem was published in Focus magazine when I was 16. And I remember how excited I was that I didn't want to encash a check. I just wanted to frame it, you know. <laughs> and I think that uh, that's why I remember how, <laughs> how old I was. And, um, but I would say, uh, at that point in time, I felt like it must have been just a fluke, you know. <laughs> I don't think I, I don't I don't think I felt like I was a poet. Okay, at that time, I was just writing poetry because I I loved to write poems, and uh, I just sent them just to find out whether they would publish it. And uh, when it did come out in the literary pages of Focus magazine, I felt like in heaven and. That kept me going, you know, and I felt like, oh, maybe there's something into this. Okay, maybe this is not just an illusion. Maybe I, I do have something to develop as a writer, you know. And the fellowship that I had, the writing fellowship I had from UP Diliman, I was 18, and that also uh, contributed to. Uh, the sense of validation, because when you are young, you don't really know whether, you know, whether you are just fooling yourself, okay, or whether you really have something to develop. And when Nick Joaquin, who was a writer in residence uh, at that uh, workshop, and he started saying, you know, uh, the positive things in my poem and the metaphor and all of that, you know. I don't think I remember exactly what he said, but what I remember is how he stood up from the panel and said all sorts of things, and, and he defended it, and he said, you know, and all, all of those made me feel, oh, okay, so I think uh, I'll go into this, you know, because if, if the national writer thinks that there is something in my poem, then maybe I should take myself seriously, you know? And uh, so I decided at that point in time, Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll major in English with creative writing as my area of concentration. And that's when I decided to send my works for a uh, workshop at Silliman University. So I received my writing fellowship first from UP Diliman before uh, the fellowship I had with Silliman University, which, which is ironic because I was a student of Sil <laughs> in Silliman, but then I had my first validation with uh, Nick Joaquin. And then after that, um, my years of exposure to, the Edith, to Edith Tiempo and uh, to her husband, her, um, Ed Tiempo, um, that helped me um, focus, okay, that, and also uh, realize how important it is to master the craft, okay? That, you know, there's so many things to learn about the craft. It's not just about, you know, I'm gonna write and that's it, okay? So I, I learned that I had to know, okay, when to rhyme, when not to rhyme, um, when to cut a line and why, you know, all of these uh, theories. And uh, I develop a healthy uh, sense of who I am because I, I would say if you don't know that uh, they're just talking about your work and there's nothing personal here, okay? It can crush you. A workshop can crush whatever hopes you have of developing into a writer. Because um, you can't count on them to say all the positive things, okay? And which is really what a workshop is supposed to be. 
And um, if you can take all the bad, you know, all the negative things that they're going to say about your works and take it, you know, with uh, a healthy ego and um, uh, consider what they said and then work on it, okay? But you see, it's, sti it's still your work, okay? So uh, it's up to you whether you're going to incorporate what suggestions that they have made, okay, how to make your work better or whether you're going to follow your own instinct, okay, of how to make it better. But it's always good to know uh, what the critics, okay, the, the trained uh, reader, okay, tra it's very few, okay, there are very few fully trained creative writers who can um, give you a, a real critique, you know, that will matter to you. And I would say that um, if you are so insecure that you'll make it your be all and end all, okay, then you, it, it's going to be very tough, okay. And um, oh, I, I was very serious about learning the, the craft and, and uh, it took a while, okay, for me to find out that this is not just about craft, okay. And um, if it's, yes, craft is good and um, I also believe what Isra Pound said that um, craft is uh, primarily a vehicle to deliver the content alive to the reader. Okay, it's not just to deliver it. Okay, here here it goes. Okay, like you know, a uh, cup of coffee, but rather it should you know sparkle. There should be that um, soul in that content, which craft is trying to to serve to the reader, and uh, it. I'd say um, it took me a lot of years to realize, okay, that um, one has to really believe in oneself, okay, because uh, if you go through what I went through where I had too many uh, fellowships okay, and too many theories and too many years on, on craft, okay, um, you can go through a mental block, okay, and then a uh, point will come when you realize, okay, it's good to master craft, okay? Craft is craft, and you need it, okay? Just as you need to know the traditions, okay? The various traditions in writings, okay? But then from that point, okay, this is about tradition, craft, and your talent, okay? Individual talent, okay? So without that uh, infuse in your work, okay, then it's just another, okay? It's very easy um, to come up with a publishable pawn, okay? If you know your craft, okay, you can just put it, you know, make it look the way the craft should should make it into a, a good publishable pawn. But to, to say that um, this is a real, you know, this is something different from just a publishable pawn, okay? This is really good pawn, okay? I would say it's because there's a heart, okay? The soul of the content in that poem has been captured, okay? It's not just craft, okay? Craft is something you have to master, but then uh, you need not just the content, but you need to find, okay, what exactly is the heart or the, the soul of this content that you're trying to write, okay? Uh, without that, I would say it's, the poem is bound to fall flat, okay? It may be publishable, okay, you know? Uh, especially for those uh, who, who who just need to fill up the the pages, the literary pages of some magazine. Okay, they might decide, yeah, okay, this is okay, okay, you know, nice cutting of lines, nice turn of phrase, and all that. But if you go through it, and if you ser if you are a serious trained uh, creative reader, you'll be able to recognize okay, that this poem is, you know, uh, gives me a, a, a different perspective of looking at that particular experience. There's a vision here that I had uh, not seen before, okay? It may be the same thing, okay? But then uh, the way it's presented, okay? Now I go like, aha, you know? So uh, being able to let the reader go through that, okay, is already something for a poet, okay? And I would say uh, it takes a lot of uh, belief in yourself. What are who inspired you to pursue a career as a poet? If, if it's a who, I, I would credit my, my dad because he didn't really say like, hey, uh, yeah, 
be a good, be a poet, okay? But um, he was a person who encouraged me to follow my dreams. And uh, since he was a fiction writer and a published one, his his works were published in Free Press and all of those other publications during his time. He was also a journalist and an accountant, and he had this open-mindedness. Okay, and so um, what what Whatever I wrote, okay, I could, I, I was able to talk about it, and you know, and he gave me feedback, and that was really, you know, um, very inspiring. Okay, if I had a home wherein writing was weird or discouraged, then I would not be inspired to go on and 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 follow my dream and and uh, spend so much years, you know, um, pursuing it and. But he was so supportive. He was, you know, he was happy for me, although he was not into poetry himself. Okay, but he was supportive in whatever kind of writing that I wanted to follow. And I think, uh, without that, it would have been so difficult for me. To, and if you would say, uh, that's the who part. If you would say what, I would say, um, it's not a conscious choice. Okay, it's not like I said. Okay, something happened in my life. I want to be a poet. Okay, I would say it's because um, uh, I can't help having that. Uh, I would say, uh, soul of a poet. You know, I, I, I feel like um, when I look at things, when I see someone go through a particular experience or even a certain look, a certain situation, when I process it, I look at it from the standpoint of a poet, and I want to capture it in, in a poem, okay? And um, it just keeps on uh, percolating here, and you know, even when I'm doing something else, I may be fixing or cleaning my, my house, but then it just keeps on growing and writing by itself in my subconscious. So it's, it's something that I really have no control, okay? And I can only be, uh, fully functional and only when I have written it down. Okay, so uh, it starts writing by itself, and then I, I you know, I, I feel like I really had to get it down, so I could be, so I could focus more on, you know, on the things that I had to do, teach, or you know, all of that. So I would say it wasn't really at first a, a conscious decision. I want to be a poet. No, it was more like it was already in me. And I wanted to, um, it, it's a form of survival, okay? Because um, um, you can't really function fully unless you, you fulfill that part of you that keeps, you know, nagging at you, you know, that tells you, okay, th I need to be written down, I need to, you know, and I, a lot of times I, I just wrote it and kept it and because I didn't know like, whether it would really gel, okay? A lot of times, uh, uh, I, I may have had to uh, do uh, several drafts before it would gel. There were some poems that just wrote by itself, and all I had to do is probably just clean up a few lines, and, and, and that's it, you know? So uh, after going through this kind of experience in, in writing, okay, I, I realized that um, this is not a conscious choice, okay? It is something that was already in me and I had to uh, follow that passion in order to be functional in this very mundane world that we live in, you know? And uh, there's no money in it, but then it's, it's something that you just have to do because it's part of you. So um, I'd say it wasn't question is uh, whether, you know, uh, what, what made me go into it as a career, okay? I don't think I, 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 I made a conscious decision, I'm, I'm going to be a poet. <laughs> but rather, it was like, this is something I had to do. This, and so, in order, wh whatever it is, okay, I believe in doing it the best way that you can, whether it's teaching, whether it's being an editor, whether I'm writing an article, okay? I believe in doing it the best way that I can. So when I felt like, oh, I have to write this okay, in, in poetic form, I had to learn the craft. I had to learn how to do it right. Okay? I had to learn uh, the best way that I can make a poem alive.
to the reader. And um, it hasn't been an easy way. I, I don't think, um, if I had known the angst that you would have to go through, because you know, there will be some, some insecurities, of course. And um, I don't think I would consciously choose it. But then uh, I realized, okay, it's something that I had no choice. Okay, this is part of who I am. And um, so I decided to develop, to focus on developing how to be a good poet as much as possible in order to express my, my soul. It's a case of touching base with one's soul. You know, I mean, you go through life without posing and, 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 and reflecting. And I mean, I don't, I think that's going to be a very flat world. You know, I mean, um, I would consider when, when I write down to write a poem, when I sit down and I reflect and what exactly is it that I want to write, it's, it's a, and when it's writing in my subconscious, it's a case of touching base with my own soul. Like, you know, how, how am I, when, when I go through an experience or when I look at someone, okay, when, when I hear somebody just committed suicide, just jump off the bus, you know, off the bridge, you know, it's, it's me and my soul reacting to it, you know. I touch base and I pose and I go like, uh, where's the meaning to that? You know, I mean, there, a, a lot in life seems meaningless unless you pose and, and, and you, you process it and then you, you, you look at it in a different way after, you know, processing it and, and, then, trying to, and then you try to capture it in, in the form that you feel best that it should uh, be delivered to your reader. And uh, when you finally feel that, okay, this is the best way that it can be, okay, that my reader can experience, okay, and see it from that perspective, okay. And that's the time when I would say that in this particular poem, I managed to capture the soul or the heart of the content of this particular, or the theme of this particular poem. So it's, it's, uh, it's not a, a conscious choice. It's, it's, uh, it's a way of surviving because of the way I am, I, I happen to be. That's why I would say by being a Cebuano, the kind of father I had, all of these things, the kind of experiences I had in life, the good and the bad, the things when I were in, I wanted to give up, you know. All of this made me who I am. And the kind of poems that I write now, okay, are coming from this body of experiences that I had and, you know. And of course, the training. But uh, I would say um, there's always a point when you feel that, OK, now I, ha now I know. Now I think I have the training. <laughs> now it's a case about um, uh, making your, your points as alive. You know, I mean, you now it's a case of collecting it, writing it, putting it down. It's a case of uh, going on. And you, do, you don't really. Uh, bother to say, okay, this is my style. Okay. <laughs> no, I mean, it's more like the poem itself um, gets a life of its own. Okay, when you start writing, okay, it gets a life of its own. And even if you may want to write it in a, in, in a sonnet form, okay, it, it won't work. Okay. Uh, once it starts uh, forming, okay, it, it gets a life of its own. And I would say that by following that, okay, that um, it was more like uh, trying to make my um, make my life easier because then my I, I'm making my subconscious calm down there. Okay, okay, I've written it down. Okay, stop nagging me. You know, and when you feel like you have finally written it down, the way the best way that a poem can be, you, you could function better. You, know? you can be. You can focus more on the daily life, making a living, teaching, and all of that, being a mother. So I would say um, it, it became a, a career, as you put it, um, almost by accident, because I had to follow um, the steerings of my soul. In the creative process of writing, do you follow a certain schedule or a particular style? Um, in terms of schedule, I would say I work best when it's in 
when everybody's sleeping or when I feel like, you know, deep in the night when the world has come down and, and you know, um, I, I feel I need that kind of setting in order for things to flow, okay? Like, um, it, I, yeah, I can sit down in, in a Saturday morning and, and try to capture um, that poem, but um, I, I realize that um, I work best, okay, my creative process works best at night, okay, deep in the night, okay, late, late night, and um, even as, and it can go if the going is good, it can go as, you know, even early morning, four o'clock, five o'clock, you know, once it starts going. Um, if I try to do it, um, Early evening, like after supper, seven, eight, it's always tough. Okay, it doesn't flow, and that's what I, I found out uh, with with my own uh, process. And uh, when it comes to um, certain idiosyncrasy, I would say um, um, I have this thing about when I start working, okay, now with a com in my computer room, before it was just a typewriter, okay, but now in my computer room, when, when I start writing, okay, I, I want to fix my mess, okay, <laughs> put my things here and my, put back my books in my, in my bookshelves and, you know, uh, and then, of course, uh, sometimes uh, I, I try it by hand, okay, whether that once it starts flowing, then I go to the computer and it go. It just flows by itself. Then I print it and I look at it and see um, whether uh, there's whether it was just uh, uh, a, a, a good phrase or whether it really um, uh, a poem worth working on. And uh, I realized that. Um, when when a poem writes by itself, when it takes a life of its own, okay, when uh, that usually all I need is uh, one or two or at most three uh, revisions, and the revisions are not major. Okay, it's just more like probably like changing some some a few words here and there and all of that, and and I go back to see like if I were to change this metaphor or this simile into something else. And then I realized, okay, if I were to do that, it would destroy um, the, the heart of the poem. Then I'd say, you know, I, I let it go. Okay. Um, I also um, had some poems wherein um, I went through it with about five or seven drafts and it still will not gel, okay? So I had to leave it I had to put it, just save it, and um, I go back, I try to go back like two or three months later, or sometimes even, maybe I forget about it, and I, I, I rediscover the poem, and I realize like, aha, okay, this is how, okay, where, where the poem should have been, okay? Sometimes there are poems that are just uh, difficult to hammer down, okay? You know exactly what you would like to write about, and you think you've done the best, way, the best craft or the best structure that you could give the poem, but uh, even the, after the sixth draft, it just will not work, okay? So but I don't give up on them, okay? I, I set them aside, and I make it a habit to check, reread it two or three months later or a few months later, and sometimes uh, that's how some of my poems um, uh, complete itself, okay, by revisiting it after letting go, okay, because if you just keep on hammering on it, okay, it just will, you know, you, you know, th there's a point in time when you know, like, okay, uh, you have to let go because it's now out of shape, okay, <laughs> it's getting, uh, getting out, of and uh, um, I'd say, like, um, uh, aside from process, you were asking about, um, Okay, po poetic style, okay. Um, I'm most comfortable with free verse, okay. It's probably because um, um, it's, it's, a, a it's the form, the structure that my, my poems work best. And um, I, I do experiment with other 
uh, format, other structures. I, I love to do some haikus uh, uh, as well as dance uh, sonnets and stuff like that. Mainly to flex my muscles. It's just like doing exercises, you know, before going into, you know, it's like doing uh, uh, the warm up in, in the gym. And, but then uh, a, a poem, okay. Uh, commands it's I would say commands okay its own style okay I mean you can't say okay this is the point I want to write I want it this I want to write it in this structure but then it will not work okay so w once you start working on it sometimes it will flow in a different structure than you intended it to be okay, so th uh, so there is no real conscious uh, structure okay I say that okay I start writing it uh, and then it flows, and then I would say, like, I, I would experiment, okay, putting it in this particular style, but then, um, then w when the poem takes a life of its own, then that's the time when I would say, okay, and whatever structure, I mean, I, I don't consciously think about putting it in a particular structure, but rather on how to uh, capture that seed there okay the content okay the, the the heart of that theme okay how to follow it okay how to put it best okay so i don't believe in in uh, putting that uh cage okay when you say that okay this is a structure this is my style okay you are limiting yourself okay i say that um i let my poems uh um find its own life, okay? So I, uh, I c writing is a process wherein um, you let your craft, okay, um, work on the heart of your theme, okay? And then when you merge them, okay, when you manage to make that craft deliver, okay, the, the life of that poem, okay, then that's, that's pra the best structure that you could come up with in that particular poem. So if you consider about when you write and you say, okay, I want to write it in this particular structure, I don't think it's gonna work. I mean, yeah, you might be able to come up with something publishable because you, you might be very good in terms of craft, okay? But then a particular poem, okay, um, a good poem, okay, will after some time, okay, will have its own life, okay? It, it starts, uh, you know, developing on its own. It's like having a child, okay? You might want your child to be this, but then it has its own life. <laughs> he has his own life and he becomes someone else. And that's fine, okay? You can always go back and, and write, okay, that particular theme, okay? If, if that particular poem develops into something else and, and it works, okay? And that's fine, okay? And if you are really uh, still bothered because you want to write about this, you can always go back and, and then try to capture that particular theme that you want to write about. But I would say that um, uh, once you have gone through um, uh, the, you know, paid your dues in terms of getting all the craft, knowing, mastering the craft that you should master, okay, then uh, structure should not be a concern, okay? It should, it should only come because it's already in you, okay? So when you write, okay, you only think about, okay, what is the heart of this theme that I want to write about, okay? And then you try to capture it. And of course, because of your training, then the craft and the style and the structure, okay, will just follow, okay? It, these are your, this is, this is your Mercedes Benz, okay? This is the vehicle, okay, that would uh, serve and make that poem alive to the reader, okay? So um, style, um, a if you were to say that, if you were to read my poem and you would say, oh, this is, this is her style, okay? Um, I would say, uh, I would rather leave that to, to the uh, scholars, okay, whether there is a, a, a particular style that you would identify to my body of, of works, okay? But uh, for me personally, okay? I don't think in terms of style, okay? I think in terms of what is the best way for this particular poem that's bothering me that needs to be written down, what's the best way to capture it and to deliver it to my readers 
alive and sparkling and, and make my readers see things in a different perspective now, okay? Because um, universal themes are something that's been there, okay? So it's your, it's, it's up to you, okay, as a writer to present a different perspective of that particular theme, okay? So if I, man if, if, if I feel like, okay, this is, this is how it is, okay, this is what I want to write about, but then when it starts having its own life, I have to follow that, and so whether the structure changes or not, whether it, it follows this and that kind of structure or the structure of a particular established point, that's not really my concern. I do not consciously think about other points. I consciously just think about capturing that point the best way that I can in order to deliver it to my reader. My ideal reader is the creative reader, okay, the one who has been trained to read in a creative manner. And um, that, that, re that audience might be small now and almost like, um, um, I would say, includes only those who are into creative writers, cr creative writing programs. But then um, that, that's already beside the point, okay? You have to be true to yourself. So whether you, you're, whether you think that the reader would appreciate it or not, as long as you yourself feel that this is the best way that I can make my, this particular poem, okay? Then, uh, that's that's already a bonus when somebody says this poem okay uh, you know it, it made me feel this and that okay I think that's already a beautiful uh, bonus which is not really part of your objective okay your objective is to make the best out of a particular uh, poem that you're working on so uh, I cannot really say it's a style but more like um, um, more like a calling, okay, it's, it's being true to, to yourself. What tips or advice can you give to the aspiring poets, especially the women? I'd say that you should believe in yourself, okay? And uh, don't think that just, uh, you know, just because you're a woman, that um, you, you're not capable to be the, the best poet, okay? in this country or in the international scene, okay? And that there are so many, so many opportunities to develop, okay? So aside from believing that you do have a talent, if you have that passion, if, if, if it makes you, you know, uh, if it moves you, okay, it makes you want to do this, okay? Chances are you have that talent, so you have to hold on to it, believe in yourself, have a healthy ego, develop it, Take time out, to, you know, to, to find out how you can develop it. Attend workshops, know the master the craft, and from there merge craft on your individual talent and 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 grow. Okay, and I would say, um, if if you really want to grow, okay, that you should go beyond what. Uh, whatever opportunities we have to grow in this country, okay? There's so many writers' colonies okay, that will give you the gift of time and place to write. So it's just a case of going to the internet. There's such a thing as um, alliance of community, uh, alliance of artists, something uh, wherein. It gives you a listing of all the colonies, writers' colonies, artists' colonies, and how to be, and how to get uh, a fellowship. Okay, because once you move on, okay, and and get into that okay scene, okay, wherein you are, you are given that opportunity, okay, to uh, develop a relationship and 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 uh, uh, you know that that special. Uh, situation wherein you are with writers from different countries, okay, and um, and then not only writers, uh, some some colonies, okay, they are into interdisciplinary uh, <coughs> uh, thrust, which means like your the, the other fellows, okay, they may be in music, okay, 
some of them are visual artists and you as a writer when you mingle with them okay when you have dinner with them at the end of the day you will grow okay so when you'll be exchanging and you'll be telling them okay you know i'm trying to i'm going crazy trying to make this story work okay and you, you tell them and, and and they tell you okay i'm you know i'm working on this uh installation okay and this 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 poem or, or this painting and you look at the painting and bam okay you that exchanges okay makes you feel like oh okay if that's the kind of problem he's having i mean i think i can you know i can relate to that okay so my own my own problems in making this thing work okay um usually is enriched by that experience okay and um, a lot of filipino writers are not aware especially the young ones okay they're not aware that there are so many scholarships, there's so many fellowships out there. They'll give you your, your airfare, your, your, your own cottage, your own, uh, you, they even have a chef to prepare your the kind of meals. If you tell them, I want oriental uh, menu, they'll, they'll bring it to your cottage. You don't have to go anywhere. You're in a, in, in, in a paradise for writers, okay? And um, there are no requirements, okay? All that they expect you is to spend the time writing. And the only thing that they, they would expect from you is to join the other fellows, to join the other writers or other artists okay, during dinner. And that's the nice thing too, because you can't be alone too much. Okay? You need social interaction. You need to live life okay, in order to, to put some life in your, in your works. And so that I would say, um, being given the time, it's a gift of time and place, being given that time okay, to work, and then time to, to socialize and know okay, the other artists in different, coming from different countries okay, has enriched my growth, and I would advise okay, the Filipino aspiring writers okay, to go there, okay, get that scholarship, because they're so generous and and they always have a particular um, budget okay, for, for the marginalized, okay? So if you're, if you're applying okay, in this particular writer's colony and you are a woman, that's already a plus factor, okay? And if you happen to be from Asia, that's also another plus factor because usually uh, there's so many applicants, okay? Like uh, in one writer's colony that I applied, uh, I was told that um, uh, the number of applicants was this high and that high. Okay, it, it, she had to go through that, and and they only had to give six um, uh, fellowships, and uh, to to be able to represent the Philippines in that particular gathering. Okay, wherein you have different uh, writers from different countries. Okay, um, is invaluable. Okay for any writer okay, in, in terms of uh, growing. And it's, it's just there. See, it's a matter of you finding out what are the requirements. But usually they would want you to come up with a project proposal and what you intend to, to work on. But then after the, the, the fellowship, they don't even check, okay, well, where, where's your body of work, okay? It's, they expect you to, they understand, okay? that the creative process is not something that you can cage and you can, you can get hold and say, work on this, okay? So if your proposal, if your project proposal is about a novel, okay? And once you are there, um, your creative process is more into poetry and it makes you write po poems and that's okay with them, okay? Because they understand that, you know, the creative process is not something you could harness and say, hey, let's do this, let's do a, let's do a play, okay? You may start writing a play and then it grows into a body of, what, a body of a collection of poems, okay? And, and that's the beauty, okay? That's, that's the, the, the most precious part of being, uh, of being a recipient of a grant. Okay. And you'll be surprised, there's so many in every state, okay? and 
and in other countries too, but uh, in, in the U.S. they have, it's almost like every state has it. So if you go through the internet, internet in terms of check on the alliance of um, writers' colonies and stuff, you know, all of this, they'll give you a rundown of the list, okay, how to, how to apply, what are the th things required, what are the benefits, you know, whether you want to, be, to go there for two months, you want to go during summer, you want to go during this, and that is something that will always help you, okay? It will validate you as a writer, it will give you the time, because right now, you and I have to make a living, right? And so you, you can't really sit down and say, okay, I'm going to spend two months okay, writing or, or what, I want to complete my project, okay? But then you have to wake up and do your do do the thing that will make you earn some money. Okay, it may be teaching. In my part, at this point in my life, it's teaching. At a point in in other points in my life, it was as a journalist, as an editor. Okay, but see, the the business of making a living has a way of draining your the energy, the creative energy, the creative spark. So it's very important to be given that special uh, gift of time and place where you don't have to worry about the world, you don't have to worry about your food, you don't have to worry whether you have income coming in because they're going to give you a stipend. So, you know, you're not going to worry about money for at least this particular time. And that's what every writer needs because every, night, every writer that I know or young, <laughs> who happens to be still in the process, even those who are in already in a certain age, like me in a certain age, okay, I would say that um, we cannot help but uh, be stressed out about the business of making a living, okay? So the business of making a living is always something that can eat the time that you would like to spend in developing yourself as a writer. And um, so right now, as a student, okay, you will have to find the time. So it's a case of um, deciding, okay, now I have to do my assignments, now I have to run and do this, attend my classes, okay. But then you have to consciously decide, okay, this Saturday night, I'm going at least to spend time, okay, trying to write this, okay, creative work. And without the decision, without the discipline, okay. See, uh, uh, everyone, everyone that I know who are into writing, they're juggling so many things. You know, they're trying to make a living. They're raising their kids. They're, they're, you know, they have to do the mundane things that life demands us to do, and we have to do it. But then you really have to consciously find the time. Okay, when I was doing this, when I was an editor, when I was and I had to raise my kids, I was running around, I was a journalist, I was also teaching here and there, okay. I had to budget my time, okay. I had to consciously, okay, now, okay, I know that at this point in time, I'll be off, okay. So I give time for my kids, okay. And then when my kids are in bed, okay, I unwind, and then I sit down and try to write. And so if you, as a young writer, okay, if you consciously will budget your time, and then consciously develop that uh, talent, okay, the, the, the craft and the talent in you, uh, it will come, you know, it will, it will just come and it will fulfill you, it will finally validate what you feel who you are, you know, as a writer. So it's a, it's a journey worth taking. It's really, it's, you know, people may think we are weird, okay, like, what she was, you know, what, so she has written a good poem, so what, you know, I mean, in a way, it's, you know, it's, it's an understandable comment, like, like, oh, why did she bother to spend so much time, you know, trying to revise that poem and all of that, she could have spent time, you know, watching a, a good movie and all of that, but then, if you, if you have, Fulfill that passion, even if you spend so many times revising it, okay? When, when you reread those works, okay, whether they end up published in, in, an, in, in a very good anthology or not, okay, ultimately it's your journey, okay? 
and uh, towards the end, of, I hope not really the end, but at least in the middle part of your life, okay, it would be nice if you'd be able to say, I'm glad that I took that journey. It made a difference. You know, I, I, I've been touching base with my soul and it has made me what I am. I'm, I'm a person who is sensitive to other people because I am a poet, because I'm a writer. And, and all the angst, all the, all the things that your subconscious has been telling you, oh, you're, you know, you're, you're fooling yourself, you're no good, and all of that, all of that will die down. Okay? Because when you're young, okay, you can't help but feel like, am I fooling myself, you know? And like, is, it, is this really worth it? It's not going to make, make me rich. Okay? No, I, I still have to meet some, a rich poet, okay? Maybe when, okay, the, the, the poet laureate in the U.S., they get a certain money, they get about 100,000 one time, but how many of us can, can do that, right? So it's about being true to yourself. And when you are true to yourself, you can go on with your life with a peace of mind, you know? No matter what they think who you are, it doesn't matter anymore, you know. You, you go on with life, knowing that this is who you are, and you are working on it. This is the journey that is part of your life, and and well, and, and I would say, always find, try to find a good mentor, okay, because it helps. Okay, when you are young, you need a mentor. You need somebody who will follow up and say. How are you doing? How are your works? Okay, send it to me and I'll give you a feedback. Because you're in the dark, okay? You're in the dark whether these works are, are okay or not, okay? But once you have mentors, okay, to tell you, okay, this is, this is kind of uh, very weak and or, or you need to wor work on this and all that. Once you have very good mentors, okay, your development will be very fast and it will make your journey easier and you'll find out that despite what this very very materialistic world has to say it's still good to follow that passion even if there's no money in it you know because you are being true to yourself thank you very much for that interview ma'am and i'm sure for all the aspiring writers out there you have learned a lot from our interview with miss maripaz and diego the same way that I did. Thank you very much and God bless.